Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sun Min Miller. Friends, you know, I always love the, uh, the um, there's some of the sutras in the Pali Canon, they start off rather than, you know, usually the address is bhikkhus, uh, but sometimes it's friends or friends and bhikkhus, I guess, especially when it's someone other than Siddhartha given the, the talk in that particular uh, sutra, but it's uh, so, friends is a wonderful word and it's so uh, appropriate here. And uh, <clears throat> so here in this uh, Sangha, you know, one of the three refuges, um, <clears throat> and of course the Sangha is the literal uh, community of, of people. You know, think of someone um, in Siddhartha's day taking the refuges and, you know, it'd be, taking refuge in the Buddha, as opposed to, you know, the other guy down the road who's also teaching and taking refuge in the Dhamma, you know, this particular teaching, as opposed to, you know, that guy down the road, his, his teaching. And in the Sangha, I mean, you know, this literal group of people who's standing there right in front of you. And, uh, you know, you, you know, people, especially in Zen will, you know, write about Sanghas and in uh, fancier ways, you know, the Sangha as like everything that supports your practice, you know, so cushion or, you know, in this case, the, you know, maybe the compu computer or Zoom and the folks who work at Zoom and the electricity, uh, the, the folks who work for the electrical company, you know, all those folks who are supporting uh, practice, um, you know, the wind out outside making noises right now um, that helps me to recognize that all things are it, you know, whatever, that basically everything can be the Sangha. And then you get all hoinang about it and, you know, try to empty it all out and, and, uh, you know, so every thought, every perception is is uh, your your sangha, and then at that point, all three refuges become uh, the same uh, the same empty thing. Now, of course, there's great value though in the in the literal sangha, the sangha of the the, the community, um, the you know the people most immediately uh, or, um, around you in your in your practice. Um, you know, there's lots of reasons for this, but, uh, you know, one of them has to do with the uh, volition or habit patterns or whatever, you know, the, 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 one of the five skandhas, which I find to be one of the most, I found to be one of the most useful uh, teachings of Buddhism is the, the skandhas and with volition in, in particular, uh, particularly because that way it helped me to see that, um, you know, there's no, there's no I in control, you know, that really important thing that, you know, I, there's no, you know, there's no guy, little mini me inside my head there, uh, flipping switches and pushing buttons and, you know, steering me around and, and so forth. There's no one to be in, in control. And so the Sangha can be really helpful for dealing with the fact that we are beings in that way. Um, that, you know, the Sangha can help you know, check on things. It, um, it's a way of helping me... Um, you know, practicing the precepts more thoroughly to help me with thinking about them more deeply. Um, the song as this, in other words, you, um, as well as, you know, my, you know, my teacher in the broader Sangha, of the Five Mountain uh, Zen Order, and, you know, other folks, you know, in the, you know, the seminary who were also part of that, uh, that Sangha, but you all, the way that you uh, motivate me to keep up uh, my formal practices and you know, encouraging me to uh, read more and learn more and giving me new insights or new ways of thinking about uh, various teachings. And just one of the simplest things the Sangha can do for us lay folks is to um, just keep us interested and to keep us going in our, in our practice. And I'm really going to miss this as my uh, work schedule changes here in two weeks. Uh, and so this will be my last talk here and I'll have, uh, I'll be here next week, but after that I may probably hardly be here at least for the next nine months, um, maybe, uh, maybe longer because my work schedule, I'll be uh, back in the office in person and won't be getting home at night until uh, too late to be joining in. Um, you know, whenever I can, I'll, I'll try to, I'll stop by, but that'll be very rare if it happens at all in the next uh, nine months or so. Um, 
and so yeah i'm gonna miss this uh the sangha you know i just think about all the things that you all you know given me in, in my practice and that i imagine you're giving one another and that you're all receiving um that you know for one thing just uh connection and empathy opportunities for me to uh experience you know empathy for others uh the ways that you've challenged my uh, practice challenging the ways that I uh, in, interpret or think about the precepts and then go on to practice them in my daily lives and as you all know the you know precepts are among the most important of my uh, formal practices uh, make a you know, make a big deal out of them um, as well as the fellowship and, and friendship so I come back to that word um, that word friends you know especially here you know kind of this, you know year and a half of COVID and and lockdowns where have those sorts of connections have been more difficult and more strained for, I'm sure, for all of us. And so, uh, well, I'm going to miss the Sangha. And uh, thank you all, friends.